is one of the most magical regions of Russia. Since it did not fall, since it didn't get crushed under the avalanche of Christian culture, it retained um, its um, archaic, very ancient traditions in a very pure way up to um, the 17th century. The members of club Dostoyanie Planete heard about a megalithic stone wall located in the village called Chusuvoe, which is located on the right shore of river Chusuvoe, and decided to visit the site and see what is this all about. The information about this wall that they could get from internet was very scarce and all it said basically was that there is a megalithic wall that doesn't fit the architecture and building style of uh, the vicinity. Now scientific uh, research has been done on this uh, location so far ever. When the group arrived in the village, the local people explained to them that actually this wall appears to be was uh, actually was a part of a factory owned um, by the family uh, Dimidovi, who had um, a business uh, in this location in the past. In the local municipality, the people were very happy to give them uh, complete information about uh, this uh, factory that was manufacturing um, various iron objects which uh, would get stored in location uh, near the wall under question, the megalithic wall, um, and uh, every spring would travel uh, all the way to the big cities of Russia um, on the river Chusuvaya. The river would be uh, used uh, to carry their uh, merchandise to be sold in the big cities. This factory that belonged to the clan Dmitry was built uh, in the 18th century and the village itself started its history some 400 years before that. However, archaeological findings show that there was um, even older, very ancient um, settlement on the same location uh, and the members of the uh, nation called Mansi resided here very long time ago. Actually, this megalithic wall was indeed really a part of this um, ancient, uh, uh, not ancient, but uh, factory. Uh, and its purpose was that uh, the boats would be placed uh, below it. And this uh, wall would hold the weight of the load 
uh, while it is being loaded on the boats. Uh, and similar system for uh, loading um, uh, boats for transportation on the river was very common in those times in this area. Originally, the length of the wall would have been some hundred meters, although not all of it is preserved uh, till now. And on one side, uh, actually, the wall is starting to fall apart. The blocks which were used for constructing the wall are actually quite large. They reach up to 2 meters in length and weigh a couple of tons. There are no uh, other buildings in the village that utilize similar building techniques or similar size of stones. You see on the screen now a very rare old photograph taken 1912, which shows the last remaining uh, uh, falling structure of the factory of the Dimidovay clan and it is clearly visible that the style of construction is uh, completely different uh, from what we see on the megalithic wall. Uh, actually uh, the full uh, factory of Dimidovay was so flimsy compared to the wall that there is no wonder that nowadays there isn't any single trace left of it all of it has uh, fallen apart uh, including the foundations even they did not uh, uh, stand till now there is no doubt that this wall was used by the factory to load their merchandise and send it on the river that's beyond doubt however it looks a bit strange um, the fact that they could have built this wall and in fact um, it's kind of uh, becoming questionable if they could build it at all after all if uh, they will they were able to uh, spend so much resources in, and money to build such a mighty wall long hundred meters if they had uh, such a high technology at their disposal, why didn't they use it to build uh, also durable buildings for their uh, manufacturing facilities? Somehow it uh, doesn't um, fit the full picture. So did the Vidve uh, use a wall that was already there or they build it as well? Another questionable um, fact in this regard is that the wall consists of some 6,000 blocks and all of them have um, absolutely different size. They are not uniform and if the wall was built during the 18th century, they would have been um, all of the same or similar size because the building um, techniques that were officially used at that time were already uh, into using uniform pieces of um, uh, building materials like bricks for example so although it looks like the wall must have been built by the Davidovi because it is um, definitely a place where things would be loaded to go on the river but on the other side um, the looks of the wall don't confirm that it belongs uh, to this factory uh, in the sense that it was built by the David V clan moreover nowhere in the vicinity there is any stone quarry from where the Davidway would could have obtained um, the stone 
needed for building the wall. Uh, and the next point is that locally at that time there was um, no machinery available that could quarry the stones and also uh, cut them in this uh, shape. If such technology was used locally during that time period anywhere in the full area, then there would have been other buildings um, that contain at least some elements of uh, such polygonal megalithic structure. However, anything uh, uh, likely cannot be spotted anywhere nearby, even in the foundations of the buildings. In reality, it is very difficult to imagine how could have the Vidovi at all built anything like this. After all, we are speaking about 18th century. At that time, the technology was not uh, enough advanced to handle the transportation of such megalithic blocks uh, at, on the long distances. I mean, in uh, the most optimistic estimation, it would have been only in St. Petersburg and um, Moscow that uh, there could have been uh, similar heavy equipment available. And that is very, very far from uh, this remote village. It's hard to imagine what kind of fortune would uh, it cost at those times to order all the way heavy equipment from Moscow or St. Petersburg and then deliver a couple of thousand megalithic blocks to this remote village. On the top of that, if the Davidovi did build this wall, um, they would have ordered also a special equipment to the location that would cut the individual stones in a, such a complex manner that they must fit each other because we are talking about polygonal masonry. It means every uh, stone uh, is not um, uniform like in a modern building uh, technique but is uh, unique and needs to be uniquely cut to fit the next one which is extremely complex task actually the geologist alexander kaltepin explains that this wall is made of some of the hardest stones available on the planet so um, very um, heavy and serious uh, equipment would have needed uh, to cut the stones and uh, construct this wall also uh, we see metal keystone cuts in um, the megalithic stones which uh, makes similar uh, megalithic masonry uh, very very strong uh, and earthquake resistant uh, very similar holes are found um, all over the world on uh, various continents and they hold the megalithic uh, masonry very tight one example is uh, Hattusha, the capital of the Hittites. Uh, over there we see um, thousands of perfectly drilled uh, holes in the stones and they had the same function, metal uh, um, uh, objects were inserted or uh, melted uh, in uh, those uh, cavities to hold the stones together forever. At that point, the team, the Steania Planete, decided to go back once again to the small local museum and search uh, more information uh, about this factory. And um, 
the director of the museum actually she found the original uh, sketches and the building plans of the factory uh, and much to everybody's surprise man, even her own the wall was not found on any of the plans there were a couple of plans of this factory available however um, the wall was not um, uh, depicted on any of them uh, which shouldn't be the case if the, it was built uh, as part of um, uh, the outbuildings of this factory. Uh, this was very very surprising to the um, director of the small museum because she herself always considered the wall to be um, something that was uh, erected by the uh, the Vidway clan. And now let's take the opinion of a geologist, Alexander Kaltepin. He says that um, this wall uh, really resembles other megalithic structures like those found in uh, Peru, uh, Egypt and Turkey and other locations. Um, it is made of a very similar uh, stone, the materials are very similar, the size of the blocks is also similar, uh, however the blocks do not fit perfectly with each other in the sense that uh, in many other megalithic structures one cannot uh, even insert a needle in between uh, the blocks. Well, this is not the case here, so this megalithic wall uh, is somewhat different. The most, uh, the closest to it, what uh, resembles uh, most um, is um, um, the wall um, in uh, Jerusalem. It is um, uh, very similar and also Alexander Kaltepin explains that this should not be a really really ancient uh, structure because uh, due to the peculiarities of the Ural region if it was built a very long time ago it should have been buried under layers of earth already it shouldn't be that close to the surface and also the sediments on its surface, the aging of the stones shows um, uh, that it has been uh, cut relatively recently. He thinks that um, this probably would have been built um, sometime in the Middle Ages uh, as far as the looks of the wall are concerned from a geological point of view that this should be built somewhere in the Middle Ages or uh, a bit earlier than that, somewhere in uh, that time period. So, indeed, this is a very, very mysterious wall. What do you think? Who built it? Is it really possible that the ancient knowledge of polygonal uh, megalithic masonry uh, survived until um, the Middle Ages in a remote area like this.